SMD Law is the official law firm of the Spartan Nation. Check them out on the interwebs at smdalaw.com or at 866-529-3537. No matter where you are in the state of Michigan, Upper Peninsula, Lower Peninsula, it doesn't matter. They have an office near you. So whether you need to send a letter to an annoying neighbor, or you're a criminal and you need defense, maybe you just have problems with elder law. Check them out, smdalaw.com today. The official law firm of the Spartan Nation. Call them first, then you act. Basically, I uh, just wanted to have a quick prep press conference a little bit here to, uh, you know, talk a little bit about 18 and uh, you move on to 19 as much as anything else, and, uh, just sort of uh, let people know the direction we're going and those type of things. So, but first of all, I just want to congratulate uh, Lorenzo White again on uh, his uh, induction into the College Football Hall of Fame and uh, be excited to be there next uh, next uh, December to, to celebrate, break that with him. He's a workhorse here, Hall of Famer, and uh, Tremendous football player in person. Uh, 2018, real quick, uh, as I said at the bowl game, high expectations. Um, I think we've set those expectations here. We've created those as we've gone along, and uh, um, I think we fell short of those a little bit, even though we went to a bowl game winning season and those type of things, we fell short a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that as you go through it. You know, obviously, injuries had an impact on our football team this year. And as we went through there. The other reason I wanted to um, have this uh, press conference a little bit is talk about each, each uh, segment of our football team a little bit. So defensively, first of all, I thought our defense played championship type defense this year. Uh, and we ended up, uh, I think, number one in the nation versus the run, number eight, third down um, conversions, opponent conversions, um, third, uh, number eight in scoring defense, and then maybe number 10 in uh, total defense. So an outstanding job, and we'll continue to be able to do that. Uh, we've got five guys that have decided to come back that are juniors. Also thought that uh, this would be a way to, to recognize them without having to retweet things, things of that nature, and they're all sort of doing it at different times, and just wanted to acknowledge um, what they've been able to accomplish. So first of all, Joe Bocci makes a decision. Joe was an outstanding middle linebacker for us. You guys know that. All Big Ten. Leader in every respect. Extreme competitor. And uh, he will bring a lot to the table. Kenny Willickus, All-American, uh, Defensive Player of the Year, Defensive Lineman of the Year in the Big Ten Conference as a junior. So he will return as well and uh, another uh, tremendous competitor and uh, has great leadership qualities as well. David Dow will return. And David in the back end, uh, you know, we lose Kari, Kari Willis, obviously, but David, uh, uh, really will pick up where he, where he left off. He'll be in his third year really starting for us. Uh, so that's exciting. He had, I thought he had an outstanding season. He was first team all Big Ten last year as well. Uh, Mike Panasuk returns, been a solid performer and has really increased his abilities and his style of play here in the last year. And uh, uh, I think he's a dom could be a dominant player up front and then along with Raekwon Williams who was also all Big Ten. And uh, Raekwon uh, uh, tremendous athlete, big bodied guy. So to me, it gives you five guys uh, that are almost like signing five, five, five star players or four star players. They, they know the system. They know the, uh, uh, the requirements here. They play championship type, type defense. They've dominated at their position at times uh, throughout their careers here. And uh, to have them all coming back uh, not only makes a uh, statement for our defense, but makes a statement for our entire program in terms of what they're trying to accomplish in, in terms of getting their degree and what they're trying to accomplish in terms of winning a, uh, a championship. So uh, very, very excited about that. Obviously, Josiah Scott was a freshman All-American, and he returns as well. But we will return, I think, uh, it's eight starters, maybe this next year on the defensive side of the ball. From a special teams perspective, um, you know, up and down a little bit, went through four putters. Um, William Prisip is transferring uh, this year. He's, the guy that was fourth in line there, and I thought he did an outstanding job for us, tremendous job, uh, sort of been, being put on the, uh, you know, put, in, put on in, on uh, stage uh, in the Ohio State game to start with, and uh, uh, but he has decided to transfer. Jake Harburger returns. Matt Coughlin, first team All Big Ten, so um, got to cheer up some snap issues. Had two of those. We've never had those in the past, but other than that, I thought pretty well. Special teams, we did okay. Offensively, which is another reason I guess I'm having this um, press conference today, is uh, to 
talk a little bit about our offense. You know, obviously, um, we're not productive on that side of the ball nearly to where we need to be. And I understand that. And, and there's not a day that goes by, I have to say, we're not going to wake up or go to sleep thinking about this football program. And so, much like every other head coach in America, you know, you think about things and how to fix things and how to change things, things and, and go through all the different uh, things that you have to deal with. Uh, so with that being said, um, I've decided that we, need to, we do need to make some changes on that side of the ball. I also, though, have decided that, you know, we've got great coaches on that side. So we're going to shake up the offensive side of things. I do that for a number of reasons, and I'll be happy to answer a couple questions after that. After that, but uh, Brad Salem moved to offensive coordinator. Um, he also coach our running backs, which he's coached before with Le'Veon Bell and Edward Baker here. Uh, he's been offered an offensive coordinator coordinator job the last three years at Power Five schools. I feel like this is a time that warrants his opportunities to to coordinate our offense. Dave Warner will step away from that position and coach our quarterbacks, which obviously he's had uh, tremendous success coaching our quarterbacks here early in 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, been very successful at that. Jim Bowman will return to the offensive line, which is, that's his career expertise. He's coached nine Big Ten championships um, at, at Ohio State and coordinated that. So he'll move to the offensive line. Mark State will move to tight ends and will coordinate our special teams. We'll still, we will still segment it up and he will coordinate those. He's coached tight ends in the past. Both Selleck's um, played for him, among other players, you know, Charlie Gant and people that have played here for him, uh, Deion Sims, etc. And Don Treadwell will move to the wide receivers. And uh, Tread uh, obviously been a coordinator at Cincinnati. For us when I was there and then came here and was a coordinator in 7, 8, 9, 10 on a Big Ten championship. I think he gives us the unique perspective of having been on the defensive side of the ball for the last uh, year. So he's seen all different type of concepts that have gone against us and uh, um, by doing that I think it enhances just the overall knowledge of what's been what's been played in other, in, on other football teams offensively and what could, what could fit into our situation. He's also been a long time wide receiver coach. Terrence Samuels will move to, um, to coaching the, um, the secondary along with Paul Haynes, he's assistant secondary coach. And uh, he's coached on the defensive side of the ball. I think he's, he again has had success in the past here, but he will, he will have, there's, there's a great deal of sacrifice on all these guys' parts as well when they make this decision. And Terrence will, will move in that direction, but he'll, he'll have an added uh, input on our defensive side of the ball, much like Tread had from an offensive perspective. Mike Tressel will assume the position of uh, assistant head coach. Paul Haynes will remain our secondary coach, along with Ron Burton and uh, Chuck Bulla, who were incidentally named uh, defensive line coaches of the year. And uh, they've done an outstanding job there. And Mike will also coach our, our, uh, our linebackers as well. Um, but did that for a number of reasons, honestly. I think they bring a great, great wealth of knowledge from an offensive perspective. And it stays in the um, in the offensive room, uh, obviously most of it. I've always been a type of person that um, you know, I'm a foxhole guy. I don't I don't uh, apologize for that in any respect. So I believe in surrounding myself with loyal people. I believe in um, in digging in when things get tough. Uh, I've always said to our players, and the reason I'm having this conference right now is because I announced this all to our players and other things to our players about how we were going to go like this in 2019. We're not going to stand still. Um, we've been good on one side of the ball. We need better, be better on the other. But with that being said, I've always been a person to talk to our players about the Spartans' greatest strength is the Warriors standing next to them. And I believe our, our people are committed. Are committed to the program, are committed to the players. I really don't want to start the process all over again and bring some completely unknown guy in with a completely unknown staff and then having them be with unknown players and an unknown commodity and start from scratch. I don't think that warrants the situation. Um, could, have been, could have done that, could have let everybody go and tried to spend, spread a little pixie dust over everybody. But I do believe that football is execution. I do believe that football is a game of ex 
execution and repetition. I've said that over and over. It's one on the inches. Sometimes it's a player's mistake. Sometimes it's a bad coaching mistake or maybe a, a misstep in teaching progression or something of that nature. But it's things I believe that we can create, correct um, in a very meaningful way. It gives us an opportunity to start on our problems and critique our problems right now. We don't have to wait a month for me to hire somebody. We don't have to wait a month for that person to figure out who he wants on his staff. We can um, align ourselves together, see our problems, recognize our problems, and much like after 2012, move forward. And that's what I've always been about here. Our coaches will speak the same language. They'll be able to go different places to find added opportunities, you know, whether I mean, in terms of watch, looking at other programs and seeing what they did, whether it's an NFL team or whether it's another college team. Uh, last time we made these uh, changes like this, I think this is probably the most significant change we've had maybe in my 12 years here, uh, but I think that it's warranted. I can't point to any position saying, hey, they did everything right. Uh, every position needs to be touched. There needs to be a diff different teacher in that environment. Uh, but I don't think that it's all about just the coaches. We all take a hand, hand in that, including the head coach, including our players. And so the goal here is to, is to continue to win, and we've won on a large scale here. I think, um, I think we're the ninth ranked program in the country in terms of wins since 2010, going into this season. So these guys have won Big Ten championships more than once. Uh, they've had NFL players. They've had first-round picks. Uh, they've had academic All-Americans, they've had great relationships with their players, and all those things warrant these opportunities. Um, and that's sort of where I'm going with this thing. I'm sure I left something out, but I can fill, fill in the blanks and I'll give you guys some opportunities to ask a couple questions and then we'll get on with it. So, there you go. Mark, two questions please. I'll ask them one at a time. First of all... Oh, wait, you, you always get two questions in if you do it like that. All right. Salaries, how will that change? Will they just swap salaries with positions? How do you plan on handling that? Well, our coaches are on two-year contracts as well, so the contract situ situation may be extended to, uh, they will remain on their same contracts right now. We will possibly be able to increase and move around some things relative to, uh, uh, you know, the opp opportunities given to me by our athletic director. Okay. Second of all, I know you said you're closing 18, looking ahead to 19. How much are you going to be looking at the possibility of a transfer quarterback coming in? I don't anticipate that doing right now. Doing that right now, I don't want to do that, uh, and that's not the that's not the way that we're going to go. You know, and I, as I said earlier, the easy thing, guys, is to say, "Hey, we've got a great defense. Let's get rid of those offensive guys. Let's shake the quarterback out over here. Put a little pixie dust right here, and everything's going to be okay." That's not necessarily the situation. Brian Lewerke, I think, understands their terminology. He's been successful here in the past. I think he can be successful, and I have faith in that. And so I put my faith in the people that I know, and uh, that's the direction we're going to go. Mark, two questions here as well. I'm going to have three for you guys. <laughs> uh, first of all, I guess your thought process in this, because I know that you, you, you've mentioned along the way that you value the loyalty and everything else, but how difficult was it for you to maybe talk to these guys and get them to buy in with these changes? Very difficult. Very difficult for me because they have relationships with the players, not only their players, but their incoming players, their recruits. And when they go into somebody's home and talk about them being there, I want them to be there. And I think I, that they can still have the same day-to-day -day relationships with their players. A lot of people work hand-in-hand -hand with each other and things of that nature. You know, Coach Salem will still be involved with the quarterbacks. You know, Coach Warren, we can flop it around. Um, so it was difficult, but with that being said, I had to make some, some difficult decisions, as you said, and um, the thing that, uh, that impresses me about our, our coaching staff right now is that everybody is all in with it. They understand, they understand the gravity of what we're trying to do. Uh, they're team players in all respect, and, um, and they'll take a step backward and allow the change to happen, and they, they've embraced the change and thus far. And I think I need to add that it's very important that there's a cohesive change uh, because if it's not cohesive, then there's going to have to be other decisions made. Uh, but I see it being cohesive. I see our, our coaches have been together for a long time, and they know it, and, uh, and I generally believe they love each other. And, and the second part of that, because you, you did bring up Brian, I guess where is his health right now going into the offseason? 
is, is it rest right now or will he need surgery? No, I don't anticipate surgery there. I would be very surprised if there was surgery. Um, I think he needs a little bit of rest. I thought that he threw the ball pretty well on uh, at the bowl game. And, um, you know, it's not always, always about throwing the football. It's about decision making too. But, um, you know, I think he's, he's very, very capable of doing what he's always been able to do in the past. Mark, uh, when did you know that you had to make these changes on offense? At what point? And uh, looking at next year, will we look at this and say this is a Brad Salem offense? Is one coordinator, coordinator now, or will it be a Mark Antonio offense? Uh, that was two questions again. <laughs> uh, let's see. First question is, when, when did I know? Uh, I started got the, started to get the feeling immediately after the season that we were going to have to do something, and um, but I wanted it to take place in a timely fashion. I wanted to go through the month of December and not be disruptive. And uh, but then after the bowl game, uh, you know, at that point in time, you know, I, I had to start start thinking a little bit more candidly. I wouldn't say seriously. I would say candidly, and and, and I thought it was. I thought the decision needed to be made as soon as possible to give everybody an opportunity. If they wanted to go in a different direction, they had an opportunity to go find a job. I thought that was important. If they had the opportunity to stay here if they wanted, I thought that was important. And then if they wanted to go, um, if they had an opportunity to find, find a position. I also wanted to, to, uh, to get back to our players as soon as possible so that they would have the opportunity to understand who was going to coach them. And, uh, and like I said, I'm all about trying to solve problems. So, in my way of thinking, maybe it's wrong, but my way of thinking, the way to address the problems is to do it as quickly as possible and start to move on. Start to move on the process, try and identify the problems, try to fix those problems. And problems are not always new with coaches. I mean, I've said in here, coming here, I don't know how many times, I said, hey, everybody wants to say, hey, run that play again when that guy ran for 35 yards. So it's just about breaking tackles, or about abrupt cuts, about catching the ball, or separating from a wide receiver, or a defensive back, excuse me, or blocking the three technique, for those of you who know what a three technique is. Um, but it's not all about, yeah, some of it's about the play that's called, but it's not always about just that. We all have to take ownership in the offense not being productive, just like we all have to take ownership in the defense playing well. It's not just the coaches. They did a phenomenal job. It's the players playing too. And it's the effect they have on them. It's confidence. It's all this teaching progression. It's the things that you um, emphasize. It's all that, it's everything put into one. And that's why I go back and say, you know, football is the ultimate team game. It really is. Um, and it is a game of execution and repetition. You can't run 100 different plays. You're going to have certain concepts that you have to repeat over and over and over. And then those concepts are eventually successful. The second question was, Second question was, you picked Brad for a reason. Yeah. Did we see his stamp, or would this be something that you would send down to him? Well, I, I looked at the last time we went around doing this, I, I, I thought about Brad saying for the coordinator's position at that time, and I, I moved in the other direction. Uh, you know, I think it's important that our coordinator, just me, it's just me, I, I don't know, served us well in the past, but um, I think my feeling is the offensive coordinator should have quarterback expertise, but she'd coach a different position because I want him to be not be in a room with four guys. I want him to be in a room with more people and have more of an impact, broader impact on the entire team. Uh, so that's the way we've always done it here, and that's what we've done. Uh, but we also want to have a guy whose expertise is quarterbacks, and really I feel like we have one, two, three, three guys on our staff right now that their expertise has been quarterbacks, and they've coached NFL caliber quarterbacks and have been highly successful, including Don Treadwell. Mark, we talked a, a little bit quickly about the guys that are coming back. Do you know of any players from the roster that will not be back or have decided to transfer or any moves like that? Uh, just William Crystal right now. That's the only one. And then obviously we lost uh, Justin Lane. Mark, I was curious, when you make a decision uh, that you, you made your decision that you had to change the offensive coordinator, was, was swapping all the other offensive positions uh, an independent decision? Or once you say, okay, I'm going to change at the top, everybody else should rotate around and shuffle around too just to, to freshen things up in that regard and, and just 
No, so, I'm not laying the blame on one guy. Absolutely not. Nor am I laying the blame on one on the coaching staff in general. Hell, I'm involved in this too. Our players are involved in this too. We just need to have more production. And that production can come from scoring in the red zone to having explosive plays to whatever it is. But um, when I made this decision, I really felt like the decision was made because nobody was immune from having that nobody's players played, oh hey, those guys played tremendously. And so that's on me and I'm, as well as on them, and I'm going to try and do my best to correct it. But I also do not feel like, as I said earlier, I don't feel like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to create circulation. We don't need to cut off a limb. We need to create circulation. New ideas, a new pattern, new teaching. Um, even if it's just a different person, different face. You know, plenty of corporations in America today uh, move people from place to place in that corp within that corporation to try and um, invigorate more growth. And that's all we're trying to do here. <coughs> and uh, we've done that before in the past. We've had continuity has been a uh, uh, something that we've stressed here, and I believe in that. Now, other people want change all the time. I believe in continuity. I believe that you, you have a history, you understand the problems that we've been through, and um, you don't have somebody else coming in and saying, oh, let's do this, and we've already had tried that. So um, I just believe in trying to uh, solve the problems, and to identify the problems, and then solve it, and then do it the very best I can, and, and, um, and quite honestly, as painfully, as painlessly as I can, you know, because I believe in that too. And with each of those position group guys, could you just maybe run down quickly uh, why you, you know, they were in their positions last summer for a reason, and now you're putting them in new positions. You obviously see a reason there. Just, there yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, Brad there. Salem, I've convinced Brad Salem to stay the course here for three years in a row. That it would, that don't leave and take that coordinator's, particular coordinator's position unless you go to a place where you can win or it's a big national reputation type place. And th these places, not that they weren't, but they were just getting started, um, and he stayed. And I think that he's got a, a, a very uh, innovative, creative, creative mind. I've listened to him. I've been in a lot of his meetings, a lot of the quarterback meetings. Probably the, if I go into one meeting, it seems like going to that meeting more often than not. Uh, and I just feel like he's been a head coach. He's been in a position of leadership. I've always been impressed when he stood in front of a group and talked to the group. Um, I think he. Uh, he brings confidence to a group, uh, and it brings energy to a group. And, in, and his players have always performed uh, pretty well, uh, not as well this year as we want them to be. Uh, but um, I just think that he's he's done the job and warrants this opportunity. I think he has good leadership skills. Uh, Dave Warner moves moves uh, to the uh, quarterback position because that is what he is. He is a quarterback's coach. He played quarterback major college. And that's what he's been predominantly. He's coached wide receivers and running backs throughout his career. But if you had to say, what does Dave Warner coach? He's coached quarterbacks. And I thought he did a phenomenal job when he first came here with Brian Hoyer. And, uh, and then with uh, uh, Kirk. Kirk Cousins, excuse me, uh, with Kirk. And, uh, you know, he's a little bit, he's a different style of teacher. And that style of teaching in that room maybe needs to change a little bit. And to Brad, it's just a different style of teaching. Jim Bowen was an offensive line coach and has been the bulk of his career. He came here as being the tight ends coach, but he was also an offensive line consultant. They work hand in hand together on the field most days, um, but uh, you know, Bowen's been coaching the offensive line for 30 plus, plus years. He has tremendous expertise in that. And, uh, I think once he got 11 Big Ten championships under his belt in some capacity. We have a wealth of knowledge and I will challenge anybody um, Somebody told me that we have 85 wins in this decade at Michigan State, most ever. And we've got another season to go. Um, so, you know, we have good coaches. Uh, Mark Staten uh, has coached tight ends in the past. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe 10, maybe 11. Um, I think 10, 10 he went to when Rochard became the, the coordinator, he went to the offensive line. So. Uh, but those guys work hand in hand, and we need to win at the point of attack at tight end and block more effectively at the tight end position. And I think he'll be all in on that. Um, but he's, he's done a great job teaching and uh, just a different personality, different mode, whatever it is, it's a shake up. And then uh, Don Treadwell, uh, 
been a wide receiver coach all his life, basically. Coordinated. There was running back coaches, coach quarterbacks, as to. Um, but um, I just think the change was warranted for all positions, so that it, that impacted Terrence and Coach Samuel as well. And I think it gives Coach Samuel another perspective and uh, going over the defensive side of the ball, which will enhance, enhance his career. And then also, um, you've got a different guy sitting in there as opposed to last year, so it also brings a little bit more uh, diversity into our defensive staff room in terms of what he's seen as opposed to what Trey has seen. Uh, making Mike Tressel the assistant head coach, I think his, his side of the team has played dynamically. I think he needs to be in a bigger role of leadership. And uh, I think he's got, um, he's got a very bright future ahead of him. And that's, that's basically the reasons to do, to do it that way. And quite honestly, if I had to go out and find a guy right now, it would take me a month to find a guy who's an offensive coordinator who I would want to run our teams and say, here's the keys to the car I've been driving for 12 years. Take it for a spin. I'd be highly irate if that thing didn't work. Hi. I'd ask him more than two questions. So, and those are the reasons behind it. Mark, uh, you went in the bowl game with some up-tempo offense, a lot of up-tempo offense. What was your final analysis of that? Do you think that'll be the biggest offense going forward? Yeah, we went with an up-tempo offense. I felt like we needed a change, plus that's something that they, you know, that they had prepared for. We're in pistol a little bit, ran more different things. Um, you know, you see the difference L.J. Scott's makes in your team as far as running the football. I mean, you just do. I mean, he almost broke a couple for big, big games. Um, you know, if the blocking on a couple of them were more correct, he would have. The backside linebacker would have been taken care of, and off we go. Um, but uh, you saw the difference there. So I think that some of it's, it's, it's players. It's, it's, um, it's, what we, it's what we're going to come up with, OK? There's a lot of different directions that you can go offensively. But when you really get down to it, guys, you want to watch the championship game on Saturday, just find me a guy that can catch the ball with one hand. Uh -huh. OK? So. A lot of the same plays that, that are being run out there in America are being run here. It goes back, back to execution, uh, timing, what's called at what time, you know, is this particular play called here, it's play selection. I know that's, that's if there's anything relative to the coaching, it's probably adjustments and play selection at a specific time. And that's a crapshoot sometimes. On fourth and one, I was the one that said, hey, we need to we need to run the naked. Well, how many times are we going to run the quarterback sneak, guys? Anybody here thinks that maybe we should run naked someday? But you got to block the guy off the edge to make it successful. And we went right by. So that's execution. So things of that nature. Now, you don't throw the interception uh, on the one that you mishandled, but things happen. Got to deal with it. As long as we play hard. Mark, you mentioned it sort of the offense you expect to see. So do you look back at uh, Brad Salem's career at Augustana in terms of the play calling there and, you know, sort of the rhythms he had or anything like that? No, 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 I don't. It's, it's, uh, it's more about what he's done since he's been here. And it, just in talking football, you ride around in the car with people. You know, I've always sort of taken the approach, really, to be quite honest. It's probably why I'd have a hard time hiring somebody is find people you want to ride around in the car with for a whole day. That's not easy. Okay, and talk football with them and talk talk a little bit. You know, you talk a lot of football with all my guys, all our guys, and um, you know, you, you tend to talk football and, and you sort of get an insight into what he's thinking and how he's going about his business and you know, he's got good ideas and I think he's an innovative thinker and uh, I think it'll help us. Um, and again, it's just time for a change and I recognize that. I recognize that. So as difficult as it is, for everybody involved in this, you know, it's just time for that. Mark, and looking back at, at this past year, uh, has that changed your philosophy about offense at all? And, and not just that, your own team, but what you're seeing around the country? Uh, you mean in terms of? Just trying to put up more points, go faster. Oh, yeah, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, you look, look back at 2017. We won 10 games, could have won more. Tight games. There's a lot of parity in college football. So, you know, if you're sitting at Oregon right now figuring out how will we held the seven points, you're probably scratching your head there. So I think it goes, it goes full circle. You know, if you look back, you know, 2014, you know, 
number 10 offense in the country, most points, yards, rushing tees. At one point, Jeremy Langford now, guys, had 18 straight 100-yard games. We had one this year. Now, is that scheme or is that execution? Now, so it's all involved. So, um, you know, it's the same people calling the same thing. We're 34 and 5. Same people call the same place. So it's not all there, it's just a different, it's a change. And I just think that, that, that we need a change um, to stimulate, like I said, to stimulate growth and, and really to stimulate circulation, like I said, to get things moving, to get people moving in a different direction and get them thinking in a different way of thinking and get them um, moving like this. And as I said, everybody involved in this process, you either get on the train or you're gonna be sit, sit there looking at the train because it's gonna leave. And I, as, I, as I mentioned today to some, um, to some people, we're going to play inspired football next year and we're going to get ready. And I'm not getting ready in January or February. I'm getting ready now. I guess it is January. But I'm not, I'm not, we're not waiting, sitting around, waiting until March. And, you know, we're going to use it every time that we, every moment that we have to either recruit or to get better as a football team. And that's, the, that's, that's what we're going to do. And a lot of people think maybe I should even have it, have a maybe I should just made a release and just put that out there. But I'm really not doing it for you people. I'm doing it for Spartan Nation because I, I want Spartan Nation to understand that, that we are moving forward, um, that there is positives coming down the stretch. We've got a lot of players coming back, and we will be a motivated football team. Now that does not guarantee success or winning, as uh, we play in a very tough competitive environment, um, but we're going to get ready. We're coming for you. Mark, you've mentioned <clears throat> fairly about execution, that it's not all on coaches, that players too. With a reassignment of some football coaches to different positions, do you, are you going to take a little bit different look maybe at recruiting, look and see if some of the execution is recruiting related, how you look at guys, that kind of stuff? You know, uh, I think we all know that recruiting is a crapshoot, guys. Mm -hmm. It really is. I mean, you can, you can, uh, everybody comes, as I told our rookies, our seven mid-year guys that came in today, which, by the way, Nick Sabak came in, J.D. Duplain came in, um, Anthony Williams came in, Trey Mosley came in, Jack Weimeister from Australia came in, Evan Morris came in, and um, I either said or didn't say Trey Mosley. You did. Anthony Williams came in. Same act to playing Williams, Mosley, Bowmeister, Morris. Kaler. Yes, and David Kaler, yeah. Um, so they all come with the foundation of level of success. And they've all been very successful where they've been. Now they have to step up and see, okay, what can you do against the big boys? Okay, just like when Devontae Dobbs and, and Julian Barnett played in the Under Armour game. Well, I'm sure it was the best competition they've ever had. Okay, so. Um, it was time for them to step up as well. So we're all challenged with trying to exceed and, and, and build on that foundation that we have. Same here. So we will build on it. Mark, I know each season presents a different challenge, but how does this year remind you of 2012 and you know great defense, offense that couldn't get you to win the same record? And then how much would you like to see it? Obviously, trans, you know, move the yeah. way 13 did. Yeah, uh, and remember, 13 was tough early on. But all of a sudden, we shook loose and on, on with Jeremy Langford. So it does remind me of 12 in some degree, uh, to a large degree. Um, but I'm not, and I'm not making excuses, but this is probably as many injuries as we've ever had. So when you look at our offense, our entire offense, we had three players, Matt Sokol, Tyler Higby, and Jordan Reed, playing every game. And I think we had nine, nine wide receivers that missed games. Missed them. And guys playing with casts on. And so, I mean, it was a little bit, it was difficult in that sense, but at other times it was, it was more about creating change. Mark, other than the uh, Penn State game, the level of production and execution was so dramatically different from the first three quarters to the fourth quarter. How do you account for that? And what do you do differently? Is it something in the yeah. offseason or? Yeah, because you, you know, you talk about yourselves and always sort of, we always sort of pictured ourselves as a fourth quarter team. We won in the fourth quarter, and we did not this year. We lost in the fourth quarter. Too many when we've lost, and you know, I think we had the lead in, what, three of the six games? I don't, you know, I don't know. I think we had the lead in maybe all but two games, maybe 
that we that uh, we lost. <clears throat> so that's something we need to work on. We talked about fourth quarter program. We talked about it and all that's talk. But now you got it's the same thing I told our players. You know, it's get on the train. You know, compete, compete. Very competitive uh, conference we're in. Got to find leaders. We have leaders on defense. You guys know that. Got to find them on offense. So let's go find them. Let's problem solve. Let's go. Um, but uh, you know, I don't have an answer for that other than other than you know, it's it's very intense and uh, competitive. Sometimes you win them, sometimes you don't. But we sort of pride in ourselves in making a play down the stretch. And uh, this year there were a couple of games where we did not. And they're small. The smallest of things hang on that. They really do. You know, on the first play of the game, and we were down on the 33-yard line going in. As you know, that I've gone over these things over and over and over in my head. If the wide receivers oversplit, which means they split out too wide, and the throw is too far, and it doesn't work. Whose fault is that? On an RPO. So you know, it's things like that. Then you're second and ten. You run the ball for three. You know. Now it's third and seven. You got to just get three, or you need to think third and seven. You need to think third and three, make it a 44-yard field goal. That's my mistake. And I didn't say think third and three. You know, so there's a a lot of different things that you can talk about that the armchair quarterback at home can talk about, quite frankly. Okay, but uh, there's a lot of different things that we can talk about that, that impacts a football game. That's why this game continues to be the most popular sport in America, whether on the NFL side of things or the college side of things. It continues to be the most popular sport because there are so many different avenues to winning and avenues to losing. So, but we're going to keep working and we're going to invest our time in that and we're going to, we're going to start now. Last question. Mark, when, when you ultimately decided in your mind, okay, I, I, I need to make a change of some magnitude here, did you consider at any point looking outside or had you kind of dialed in of some of the changes and I wonder <coughs> if you ever thought about Don. Yeah, I looked at every team. option available. I looked at all options. I really did. But uh, again, I go back to uh, uh, I'm not an offensive coach. I have offensive feelings, strong feelings, or and offensive concepts that I understand and feel like we need to do and want to see certain things uh, done, certain concepts. But I'm just not, after 12 years, ready to just take my take the car and just hand over the keys to somebody and say, "Here you go." With I'm not having, I think there's a there's a there's a huge learning curve there in terms of who's who, in terms of what this place represents, in terms of what kind of people I want in this program. I'm talking about the quality of people. Um, there is just so much to 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 filter through that I came to the feeling like hey, we got good coaches. We just need to shake it up a little bit. But we have good coaches. We understand concepts. We have we know we understand the history and what went wrong. Now let's try and fix it. And we've got good players. We've got a lot of players back. We should compete. And the expectations have has risen here. Most people, hey, quite honestly, a lot of people celebrate seven and six. Especially they'll be saying, hey, we only lost, you know, and we could have won those other ones. They're celebrating. But I understand I understand the expectations here and I and I uh, wrap my arms around you. I embrace it. So we'll get ourselves ready to go. Like I said, we will be inspired. Good? Thanks. Thanks.